Today, we're gonna to learn how to make an abstract looking text animation. How is it going guys? And welcome to the Olufemi channel. We're a group of teachers that wanna shore up your video production skills in as little time as possible. Yo, it's Herman here back on the Olufemi channel and welcome, welcome to the fourth video in our text animation week. That's right, this is the fourth one. So if you haven't checked out the previous three, then you know what to do, you should check it out, they're not bad. As a refresher, I'm gonna be sharing five text animation tutorials this week that fuse design trends so you can easily make something presentable for either a title card, logo stinger, or YouTube intro. Now today we're gonna to be focusing on creating an abstract text animation. Now abstract can be a little subjective, so I went with something that's still legible but combines different techniques, textures, and mixed mediums. Think arts and crafts where you can just slap things together and make something quirky and playful, but in After Effects. Now, as I mentioned in the previous videos this week, I'll assume that you know your After Effects basics, meaning you know what most of the basic tools do, you know what masking is, keyframing is. If you don't, don't worry. You can check out my After Effects basics tutorial to learn from scratch by clicking the little pop-up over there. And just like the previous three videos, you can also download the project file that I'll be using in the description below so you can follow along. Otherwise, let's get a little crazy in After Effects. So here we are in the program. Ooh, let's get started. First, creating a new composition as usual. Keep it HD, we'll call it something Thing like abstract if you want to be really abstract you can just play with the characters like that oh look at how fun that is that was dumb. I'm gonna edit that out. Once you make that new composition, we'll just place it into the main comps. Now the first element of abstractness is we're going to use some mixed fonts. So we start things off as we usually do by using the text tool, just typing, uh, let's say abstract, and that will be our main text. Let's go for something kind of thicker as our main text, like the final title that appears. Let's go for this one and then we'll change the size. We'll make sure that it is aligned in the center as well. We will hit Control Alt Home so that we center the anchor point to the text and then Control Home so that it is centered to the composition. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a text layer for each character that I want to be a different font. So over here, if I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I'm gonna find eight different fonts that are you know unique enough so it feels kind of like more abstract. So I'm gonna use this one as kind of like a reference. I'll just change the opacity something a little bit lower and then I'll duplicate it and I'll change the opacity a little bit higher. And this one, we're gonna go for something else. Let's go for that font that I was using earlier. That's a little bit thinner. And then I'm just going to make sure that it is spaced out so it overlaps with the uh, characters from the previous font. So in this case, I'm just gonna drag the tracking over as much as I can. A thousand seems to be the limit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. And then the next font that I'm gonna use is just something thicker. And I'm just gonna do this six more times. Okay, so I've set up the text layer so that there are eight of them. Don't mind the numbering. I just had to play around with some different fonts and duplicate it. So we're gonna change the opacity of the bottom one back to 100 like that. And then we're gonna be using the same technique as what we did for the second video of this week for maximalism, where we're gonna have basically the text flicker in but each character is going to be isolated and flicker one by one so how we do that is by clicking the down arrow over here and going to animate opacity i apologize if i go a little bit fast because we're covering the same thing as what we did for that episode but i will still walk through all the steps and we're going to change the opacity down to zero meaning you know this will be the end position. We click this arrow so we see more values from the range selector. And then we're going to have the start position to something where we can only see one character. Now this will depend on how many characters are in your text. But in this case, around 12 is pretty good, I think, because I don't see anything else except for that one character at 12%. And then we're going to hit the stopwatch for the offset. That's where we're going to keyframe. And then we're going to move over about, I don't know, 12 frames or so and then we'll go all the way to 100, and then we'll see it, everything. Like I was saying, basically we want to isolate each character on its own. So what we're gonna do is we will click the animator one over here, highlight it, hit control D so that we duplicate it. So we have a second one, and this one, we're going to you know, go down to the drop down menus all the way to advanced. We're gonna click that, and then we're gonna see all these lovely parameters we can change. And although it looks a little bit intimidating, we're going to actually go to the mode, and instead we're going to click subtract. This is what it looks like right now, but we want to actually see the characters fully. So we're gonna change the value over here, the offset to minus 12 so that we see the entire character. And then we move all the way over here, and then we'll change this until we see a full character like that-ish. I think 75 would be pretty good. Now we can still see a bit of the previous letter like that, so all we have to do is move this keyframe over just a little bit so that we don't see it. And then we're over here. Like that. And then we're going to just hide the drop down menus for these two animators. And then basically what we're going to do is we're going to apply these two animators over to the rest of our uh, different fonts that we already prepared. So just make sure these two are highlighted. We're going to hit control C. So we copy it. 
and then we're going to make sure that the rest of the text layers are highlighted and then just make sure that it's at the very beginning over here so that it's all lined up the keyframes so for example if i were to like go over here and i hit Control v and then i were to hit the shortcut u to show what's keyframed it'll all start like over here which is not what we want so make sure that your playhead is lined up make sure all these are selected and then Control v and then basically the effect is applied to everything and then when i unhide it it will show that it overlaps like this, but we want it to stagger so that each character will be a different font. So how we can do that is by hitting control A. So we select everything. I'm just going to hit U and then U again so we can hide the keyframes and you can see all my layers. Now, before I stagger everything, I want to make sure that I trim my layers so it's not like, you know, a full like 10 seconds, which I think is what I have this composition as. So I'm going to highlight everything, hit Alt right bracket so that I trim everything like that. And then we're going to stagger the layers by highlighting these uh, ones omitting the bottom and we're just going to go in and move it by about two frames because I believe that's when I can start seeing the other uh, text without it entirely overlapping. So I'm going to deselect the bottom one, move two frames, deselect the bottom one, move two frames and I just keep doing this for each character. And then this is what it looks like when I zoom out. Looks like it's flickering through some random fonts. So although it's cycling through the letters and it kind of ends over here, we do want it to end on the abstract main font. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that bottom one, which is the font that I want it to end with and hold on to. I'm going to hit Control D, I'm going to place it on top, and then I'm going to stagger it, you know, two frames from that top one over here. So it's sequential like this. And then I'm going to click this bottom arrow, click the text, and then I'm going to delete the second animator because that was the one that kind of removes it from the left to the right. So I'm going to delete that. And then now, it ends up with this and then I just have to extend that to the duration of the composition and then this is what I end up with. So it looks like it's kind of flickering through different fonts from left to right before it ends with this font over here. And that's a quick and dirty way for the fonts to change. Actually Ben Marriott, which is an amazing motion graphic designer, has a tutorial on how you can make this randomized font very similar to the title sequence in the show Loki. So you can check that out as a variation but for this one I feel like it gets the job done. And I'm just going to hit Control A so I highlight all these text layers. I'm going to hit Control Shift C so I pre-compose it. And I'm just going to package it in this nice pre-composition and call it something like uh, abstract text random. All right, and then we're ready to move on to the next step of making things a little more abstract. So we're going to hit Control D, so we duplicate this layer. And then what we're going to do is we're going to mask certain portions of the text and make it a little bit larger here. And then we're going to cut off a couple of them so it feels a little more flashy. And I'm going to first start by making you know certain areas enlarged. So how I'm going to do that is by hitting this rectangle tool, and I'm just going to have it like this so i'm just highlighting the a b and s hit s so i bring up the scale and then make this a little bit bigger like that maybe that's a little bit too big let's do something like this and this is going to only last like maybe two frames so i'm just going to hit alt and then left bracket so i can trim the clip on the right and then i'm just going to move over one frame and then alt right bracket so that now this top layer that's enlarged if i just hide the visibility of that one this will only last two frames. I'm just going to do that. And I'm going to do that for, you know, a couple different spots. So we'll try one that's kind of like, you know, over here like that. And then this one, maybe we'll like cut it off a little bit. So we're making it look a little bit more random, a little more intriguing. So all I did was duplicate the layer. Um, this one, I'm just going to have appear on one frame. And then this time I'm going to you know, make it kind of like this. All right, so I have some odd versions flashing in and for those portions, I'm going to have it so that this bottom layer, whenever there's like a bigger version of it, I'm going to cut that part out from the regular size one. So same thing, I'm just masking with the rectangle tool. I'm just going to highlight the ABS and then I'm going to change the mask to subtract so that we remove that portion. So this portion is now a little bit bigger compared to this. In fact, I can probably make this one I can probably exaggerate it even a little more like that. And then this mask should not stay here the entire time because it's going to, you know, cut out the letters the entire time. So we're going to move this mask around. We're going to hit M so that we bring up the mask path. We're going to hit the stopwatch so we keyframe it. So that's going to appear starting here, which is when the bigger version appears. Go back one frame and then we're just going to you know, move this mask somewhere else. Maybe it cuts off a little bit of this side and then the beginning over here we can just move it completely out of the way. And then over here, we're going to keyframe it again. And then starting from here, when it's there's no bigger version anymore, we're just going to move that mask somewhere else. Maybe I'll cut it off like from the center like that. I'm just chopping off different portions, making it look more dynamic. We can do something like that. And then this one, 
because there's a bigger version of it, we're just going to cut off the R, A, and C. And then this one, we're just going to move back kind of like over here. And although I'm moving a little bit fast, all I'm doing is just randomly like moving this mask around. And then when I play that through, this is what I have so far. Now, before we continue, let's take a small break to talk about this little thing that I made called Enter the Future. It's a motion graphic asset pack that I handcrafted and includes a variety of assets you can use for your music videos, commercials, live streams, narrative films, you name it. So if you need transitions, borders, or custom text animations to give your video a modern edge, I recommend checking it out. All right, back to After Effects. Looks pretty abstract so far, but we're going to add even a little more to make it look more abstract. And another way to do so is to add a variety of shapes. So for example, uh, I can go into the shape tool over here, make sure nothing is highlighted. So I'm making sure that I'm actually drawing a shape and then I'm going to make sure that it is filled for this example. And then the stroke can be nothing. Bad. And then during some of these portions, especially like over here in the beginning, I can fill up that space over here where there would be letters with just kind of like a rectangle. I'm going to have it flash for like maybe two frames by hitting alt and then left bracket to trim that layer while that layer is highlighted and then alt right bracket we extend that to about two frames and that will just appear kind of like this and then i can just play around with it it's like arts and crafts as i said before you're basically just playing around with things so that there's this element of randomness making it feel more abstract so you know i'm just going to play with different shapes i'm going to use even the ellipse tool so that certain portions like maybe over here i'll draw like a circle and then i'll make that last you know two frames and again i'm using the shortcut alt left bracket and right bracket to trim the clips from left to right we'll even draw a triangle somewhere over here maybe the a i think that kind of makes sense and i've gone through how to adjust the shape for the polygon tool if you hit the down arrow then you remove the amount of sides i'm gonna hit shift so i'm making sure that it is parallel and this was approximately where the a was so i will trim the clip so when i play back this is what it looks like so right now i have only filled shapes but you know what let's get crazy let's also use outline shapes so i'm just going to make sure the stroke has a solid color and then the fill is nothing and that's how I can create an outline. And then I'll make the stroke something like six. So let's find a nice portion in order to do that. Maybe I'll just do something like this and then make that last like two frames. And then I will even draw something over here like this. Make it last one frame. And then over here, I'll change it to, I don't know, a circle. And then just add an outline of a circle over here and make that last one frame as well. And this is what I have so far when I play it back and it's starting to look a little more creative, doesn't it? We can always hit Control A and then Control Shift C. So we pre-compose everything in this again. As you can tell, I like pre-composing things and we'll say abstract, abstract you know, text with shapes. And then I'm not a big fan of how this A is just on its own. So I'll just kind of like trim that clip and then start it from kind of like over here. So we have a couple of letters just like that. Hit control S. So we make sure that we save everything. It's really easy to forget that. And the next element of abstraction is to add some textures from different things. You can use whatever you like. In this case, I just downloaded some animal textures from Envato Elements. They've got a crazy selection of different things. And in this case, I just imported a uh, animal folder over here with different types of textures. Let's go with something like uh, a cow. Sure, why not? So we can place that right over here and then we can hit s so we can bring down the scale so that it kind of is like that and then we will take the pen tool and we're just going to mask some you know random areas of this and i'm going to have different animal textures overlap with each other so i'm just going to make sure that you know it's kind of overlapping with the letter kind of like that and then i'll add the next thing crocodile sure why not hit s so that we rescale it and we will put that underneath then we're just going to use the pen tool and do the exact same thing and we're just going to go through each one of these textures and just do the exact same thing i'm just overlapping them and then uh, using the mask tool so that i cut them out and this is after just a couple minutes of layering my different animal texture layers as you can see in the timeline over here they're all masked and then i'm going to highlight all of them so you can hit Control shift c just to pre-compose this and call it animal texture like that and then this is what i have to work with so what i'll do now is i'm going to move this animal texture underneath the text layer and then i'm going to change the track mat so that it is set to luma mat so basically whatever that is bright in the abstract text layer which is all the white those are the parts that this animal texture is going to show through so if you know how luma mats work then you understand what i'm talking about so if i don't see the track mat modes then i can just hit this button toggle switches and modes and then change the track mat to luma mat like that so as you can see everything that was white will show through and this is looking 
pretty interesting so far. But while it ends like over here, then it gets a little bit too static. So we're going to add a little bit of movement, just like how we usually add movements, just going to keyframe the position by hitting P. So we bring up the position, hit the stopwatch like that, and then, you know, go down over here to the end. And we're just going to, you know, drag it kind of like that. So I have this kind of like diagonal type of action. So it moves like this and that way it's a little more dynamic. And now that we added the animal texture, although I like the you know different colors over here, I do want to have it feel somewhat coherent, even though we're going for something abstract, we don't want it to look too random and too messy with like a bunch of different colors. Otherwise it just looks like an eyesore. So we're going to pick a color theme. And as I've mentioned before, I like to just go to the Adobe color website over here and we're just going to hit the explore tab. And then let's go with something modern i don't know what's gonna show up let's find out together let's go with this one over here let's go with this kind of like cyan and this magenta over here so we're going to go back to after effects we're going to right click a random space over here go to new and then make an adjustment layer and then we'll call this color change and then we're going to go to the effects control panel over here and we're going to apply a new effect and this one is going to be cc toner and the plugin that i'm using to bring this up as i mentioned before is called effects console by video copilot and it just saves me a little bit of time extra few seconds and effort to move my mouse all the way over to the effects and presets panel and then try and look for my effect so i'm using cc toner as the effect and then i'm going to change the tones from tritone to pentatone so that i have more range to work with so we can keep it white and black but everything in between Let's just go and alt tab back over here. We're going to copy the blue first. Okay. So anything around the brights, we're going to change that to this blue over here. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing for the midtones as well. I'm just pasting in the values right down over here. And now we have this blue. We're going to go back and then we're going to copy this magenta, go back to after effects and the darker tones are going to be kind of this magenta. And then now I have this nice little variety while still having it feel coherent with that magenta and that blue contrast. So at this point, the animated text portion is basically done. Now we're just building a scene so that it looks a little more presentable because just you know on its own, it always looks so plain when you're doing these text animations and it's just on black. So we're gonna lean into mixed mediums by including different textures. So back in my assets folder over here, I actually included paper texture. We're gonna put that in the bottom so that this is gonna be my background. And then right now it's all blue because it is affected by that color change over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these layers that what I was working with that is not the background, just the animal textures, the abstract text of shape and color change, hit control shift C so that I can pre-compose it. And this will be just text master because we're basically done with the text and then we're going to manipulate this background layer by highlighting it hitting s so i can bring up the scale i'm just going to scale it down so it actually you don't magnify too much onto the textures of it and this is what it looks like so far so with mixed mediums another medium or texture that i can use is a piece of tape so i've imported that as well also downloaded from envato elements and this is what i have so i'm going to put that into my timeline i'm going to stick it on top of my background layer but behind my text layer i'm going to hit s let me go like that and then this is just going to kind of act as almost like a little background for this and we can animate this piece of paper although this is not like really text animation it's still using the same principles as what we did earlier with just masking things so i'm going to mask the entire piece of tape by using that shape tool and then just drawing a mask over it i'm going to hit m so i bring up the mask path so this will be the final position and then I'm just going to hit page up. So I go one frame back and then I'm going to hit V. So I have the selection tool and I can double click this mask and then go midway, kind of like that. And then hit page up again and then just have it kind of like that and then hit page up again and then just move it out all the way. So as you can see, I have these keyframes over here where it is out of frame all the way. And then we see a little bit of the tape halfway through the tape and then the full piece of tape. And then I want this to happen a little bit sooner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight these keyframes and then just move it a little bit to the beginning when I want this tape to kind of appear. So I can actually have it appear when it's done being abstract and random. I think that might be a good spot. So kind of like over here. And it signifies that basically the randomness is like done. And then just to problem solve with the scene right now, as you can see that there are some black portions of the text that are kind of hidden with overlapping with a piece of tape and it doesn't look as good. So we're going to go back to the text master, go to color change for the effects and presets panel over here. And instead of black, I'm just going to go for a magenta like that. And then this is what we have because this part with the colors, uh, overlapping with white, it's not quite standing out. I'm going to actually make this random portion not colored and textured. So I'm going to find that spot right over here before everything starts to settle in. I'm going to hit control shift D and that is a shortcut to split the clip from where the playhead is. So as you can see the playheads over here, all I did was I highlighted the clip like this, 
hit control shift D so that I can split the clip like that. So everything before that, I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to add a new effect called fill like that. And I'm going to make it black. So it's going to be black and white like this before it becomes full of color. But I'll have that transition maybe happen a little bit sooner. So I'm just playing with the length of the clip. But I mean, you can you can check this out and let me know in the comments what you think so far. We're going to add a little more depth by, as you probably guessed, mixing more mediums. So another one is using Doodle animations. So I have a folder over here called Doodle and I imported two of these already. So this one's like a circle that's being drawn around and I'm just going to I don't know, move the circle kind of like this. So this is kind of like, you know, reminding you of a marker that's drawing. And then I'm going to add the square one as well. And we're just going to, you know, move that. So it's offset and it's looking a little bit messy, but don't worry, we're going to fix that in a little bit. So I'm just scaling it down and I'll have it kind of like draw around the A and B like that. So this is blue right now and it's not quite matching the color theme that we are going with. So what we'll do is copy the color of this and then go back to After Effects. And then we're going to use the same effect as we did before, where we're going to fill the color like that. Go to the Effects Control Panel, change the color, and then we're going to paste the value that we just uh, copied from the Adobe site. And then same for the square. In this case, instead of going for the blue, we'll just copy the magenta, go back to After Effects, and then we will apply the fill effect and then copy and paste that value like that. So it's still within the color theme. And then now we're going to add even a little more. We're going to cake it up. This time we're going to use these brush strokes, which is also a different medium, right? We're using uh, paint as opposed to like a marker type of texture. So we can, you know, put this, I don't know, on top of the paper layer like that. And now this seems to be a little bit slow for my taste. So I'm going to right click it. Go to time and then time stretch. And I'm just going to lower it to something like 60. So we're basically making it a little bit faster. And then I'm just going to hit R so I can rotate it and then just move it around kind of like that. And then I'm going to add the second brush one right over here. And this one is okay to be a little bit slower. We're just going to scale it down, move it around. So it's kind of like this. Just play around with it until you find something that you're happy with. And you'll notice that these clips kind of end a little bit too early. So this brush number one, which is this brush from uh, the top to the bottom over here. I'm going to right click it and then time. And I'm just going to hit the freeze on last frame so that when I click that, basically it will freeze on the last frame. So I don't have to worry about it cutting early. Same for this circle one time freeze on last frame. And then we have something like this. So this is not looking too shabby, but we also want to, you know, fit it within the color theme. So we're going to go back to, you know, for example, this circle layer. And when I go to the effects and control panel, then we're going to copy the fill effect. And then basically we're going to take the color of this and we're going to apply it to one of the brushes. Let's say this first one over here like that. And then we're going to go to the square, take the color of the magenta, and then we'll paste it onto the circle one over here, here like that. So this is looking a little bit too sharp. I actually want it to blend a little bit better with the background. So I'm going to highlight these two brush layers. I'm going to change the blending mode to either soft light or overlay. So in order for these paint brushes to kind of be a little more apparent, I'm going to darken the paper texture. So I'll go to paper, which is the very bottom layer over here. I'm going to apply an effect called curves. And I'm just going to lower the uh, brightness of that. So we can see a little more of that paint stroke. And just to problem solve a little bit aesthetically, I'm not a big fan of how this is blue and then the background paint is blue as well. Kind of wanted to have that contrast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the colors between the two. So I'm going to take the blue over here. I'm going to move it to the circle like that. And then that will replace that color. So I will go to the layer that had magenta, which is this brush stroke over here, copy the fill over there and then go to the circle. So the circle is now magenta. And then the square is now blue. So we got these circles, these straight lines, these boxes, and then we have these random fonts with different textures. And this is what we got. Now we're pretty much done, but we're going to add some final touches, three small things that I think might make it look a little bit better. I'm going to right click an empty space and then just make a new adjustment layer. We're going to rename it to vignette because that's what we're going to make. I'm going to add a curves effect. And then we're going to darken everything a little bit like that. And then I'm just zooming out so that I can mask this and actually create a vignette. And vignette basically darkens around the edges of the frame. Uh, so in this case, I actually want to change that to the ellipse tool and then just draw this kind of like oval type of deal. Uh, I'm just going to move that like that. 
and then we're going to change the mode to subtract and then we're going to hit F so we bring out the mask feather so that we smoothen out and feather out the edges and we're just going to bring up the value until it's something kind of like that. So that way it brings a little more attention to the center and darkens around the edges of this composition. And to add some subtle movement to everything, I'm going to right click, make a new null object and then this one we're going to call it scale control. As the name implies, I'm going to basically have everything just slowly scale in. So we're going to highlight everything except maybe the vignette. I don't think the vignette really needs to be uh, scaling up. And then we're going to parent everything over to the null object. Now, if you don't know what parenting is, basically we're taking all the layers. We're taking this pick whip and this is the parent pick whip and we're going to drag it all the way over to the scale control and then we're going to drop it. So this is going to be the parent and then everything else is the children layer and then it has to listen to the parent layer. So whatever happens in this null object, in this case, we're going to hit S to bring up the scale, go to the beginning, hit the stopwatch. So we create a keyframe, go to the end, uh, maybe just like over here. And then we're going to move this so it's maybe like 108. So basically every layer that was parented to that scale control layer will now listen to it and everything will scale up. And that's what that looks like. And last but not least, can you guess what's the last thing I'm going to add? If you guess noise, you are correct. We're going to create a new adjustment layer and then we're going to rename it to noise, add the effect noise, change it to something like seven. And that just adds a little bit of life to our animation. That's what we got, an abstract title animation. And that is how you make an abstract text animation. Pretty fun being able to add random elements to create something coherent. It's like taming the chaos. I don't know what I'm talking about. As usual, let me know in the comments what you end up using this text animation for. And make sure to subscribe to the Olufemi channel so that you don't miss the final tutorial in this text animation week. Also make sure that you hit that bell notification so you don't miss that. Check out the other three if you haven't done so already because We've gone through three already. If you want to check out what I'm personally up to, you can check out my YouTube and my Instagram. The handles are right over here. Otherwise, again, my name is Herman, and I'll see you guys in the next one.